If you have your Bibles this morning, I invite you to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Stand as we honor the Word of God this morning, if you can do so. Mark chapter 7, verse 24. Mark chapter 7 and verse number 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into the house and would not have man know it. But notice this phrase, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. And the woman was a Greek, Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was coming to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity and these that have gathered into your house. Lord, we just ask that for the next moment or two that we can spend together, that thy word will be preached and hearts will be touched. Father, it's impossible for me to do everything that needs to be done. And Lord, it is your message, your people, your hearts. And Lord, for the next moment or two god just fill us with your presence let us know that you're here and lord for those that have brought many burdens into the place and father we realize with the crowd this size there certainly there are those that are <clears throat> facing some uncertain times and there are those lord that are hurting inside and father i pray that this message will be a message of hope and a message of deliverance father we thank you in advance of what you'll do in jesus name i pray amen you may be seated previous in Mark chapter 7, the Jerusalem Pharisees clashed with Jesus about their traditions, like the washing of hands, and Jesus was, in early in this chapter, was going to expose their hypocrisy. Soon after Jesus had this confrontation with the Pharisees, he did something that was really interesting. He left the lake where he was, and he headed to the region, the Bible says, of Tyre and Sidon. These cities had a history of commerce built around the sea trade of the day. However, this place where Jesus was going to had a, had a wicked reputation and a wicked religion. But please notice something here. Here we are seeing Jesus do something that you and I are beneficiaries of today. Now notice this. Jesus was moving away from the Jewish people. Their leaders had rejected Jesus and now our Lord was going to the world of the Gentiles and beloved, that's good news for you and I this morning. With all the special benefits that the Jews enjoyed, Jesus was finding it difficult to find real faith in the land of Israel. But now Jesus would try a region in the world where darkness ruled. He would not just go to any ordinary Gentile, but to the world of the Canaanites. Now, if you don't know anything about your Bibles, you must know this, that back in the Old Testament, Joshua was ordered to wipe the Canaanites off the map because of their wicked practices, because of the things that they were doing against God. Now, Jesus is about to show each of us an important lesson, and it is this. How bad do you really want the Lord to help you in your personal problems? Just how far are you willing to go to find out what you're looking for? This is a deep and moving story, and at times, I will submit to you, it is a very strange story when you don't know the backdrop of what we're fixing to study this morning. So, if you just kind of pay attention with us and kind of look around and kind of get your heart ready for this, I believe there's a message not only just for our moms, but for us as well. So we understand that Jesus is in the region of Tyre and Sidon, and those cities were not far, listen to this, those cities were not far from our modern day Beirut, Lebanon, Lebanon. And each of you know that Jesus is a whosoever will Savior. And listen, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are or who you've come from, Jesus will come to you. Amen. That's a, that's a thing for us. Now, notice if you will, let's start breaking down some of this story so we can make some practical sense out of it this morning. In Mark chapter 7 and verse number 24, let's note something very quickly. The Bible says, and from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house, and look at this, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. 
Now that phrase is interesting as we read a while ago, but the Bible tells us that they had already heard about Jesus. Notice, if you will, Luke chapter 6 and verse number 17. Luke chapter 6 and verse number 17. Scripture says it this way, And he came down with them and stood in the plain, and in the company of the disciples, and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem, and from the sea coast, watch this, of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of all of their diseases. So we understand this. The presence of Jesus could not be hidden in a home, in a church, or in an individual. One person who heard about Jesus, no doubt, was this particular woman. She is called a woman of Cana. She had a Greek descent, but she had a problem that any mom in this room would understand. She had a child that was in harm's way. Now, let me just tell you this. Perhaps you have dealt with a child that's out of control. And I want to tell you, in this generation, we are seeing this at an at a epic proportion. Amen. Come on. We are seeing that our children are just running crazy. We are just seeing that the children have no boundaries and no direction. The, the direction of the home has changed from the last uh, 10 or 15, 20 years, where it used to be that uh, moms and dads have a semblance of order in the home. Now we don't have any of that. We don't see any of that. And beloved, listen to me. This is the reason why it's important for you moms and dads to expose your children to as much church as you possibly can. This is the reason why we meet today. It's not to, listen, not to do anything but to strengthen your home and to support your home and to get your home some biblical understanding. Beloved, I want to tell you this. One of the troubles that I face as a pastor is seeing that what the condition of the homes that are in today. Listen, it is far different than when it was 25 years ago when I started. 25 years ago, there used to be some respect in the home. You know, there was a dad and there was a mom and there was a, a pecking order in the home, if you will. Now we're all just kind of going our separate ways. We eat different times. We don't come together. And the schedules are just absolutely crazy. And friend, I want to tell you this. If you don't know anything, you have to know this. That the devil is after our children. Amen, preacher. Make no mistake about this. Now notice, if you will, I thought this was a, a very, very interesting. Notice in Mark chapter 7 and verse 25. The Bible says it this way. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. Now, this is, this is not a bad place for us to begin, and, th and this is the beginning point of this story. Here we see a, a woman that, uh, that knew her daughter had some issues. She heard about Jesus' healing powers, so here's what she decided to do. She says, I'm going to give Jesus my full attention. And the trouble with that is we're going to see what, uh, how, how much difficulty she had to do to get to Jesus. Now, let me just tell you this from the outset. Probably one of the greatest things that we have going for us today is that church is plenteous to all of us. We have churches on every corner. We have belief systems in every sphere of uh, our lives. And beloved, we don't know what it is to not to have the ability to come to church. We don't know what it is where, where church is not located wherever we are. But friend, I want to tell you, in the Bible days, is it, it wasn't quite like this. Here was Jesus teaching, and here was Jesus going over the neighborhood and the villages and teaching. And His fame reached certain people. So they came out in groves to hear Jesus. And lo notice what this lady did. The Bible says, and came and fell at his feet. Are we awake this morning? And came and fell at his feet. Now, if you're taking notes this morning, I thought this was interesting. This woman had a daughter who had a demon inside of her, and the term that, uh, that is used here, young daughter, means, listen to this, it means darling little girl. So you can see how special this young daughter was. And the words unclean spirit means, listen to this, unclean in a moral sense. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nobody got that but me. Everybody look up here. That word unclean means unclean in a moral sense. Did you follow this? Here was some young girl that got involved in something in a moral sense, something that she opened her heart to, something that she got encountered with, and the devil sought opportunity and invaded this young girl's life in a moral sense. Friend, listen to me. We usually think that moral slips are men or women, but beloved, can I tell you this morning, it can happen to our children as well. The Bible says that this young girl had a moral slip. 
And friend, I want to tell you about this. It, it, I don't know about you moms and dads, but I would not want to go back and have to be raised up in a generation in which we are seeing today. I would, I'd hate to do that because of this. The peer pressure that our children is under is incredible. Now listen to this. The devil is doing everything in his power to get a hold of the lives of our children and ruin them. The parents who have taught their children right from wrong and brought them up in church are especially on the devil's alias. The devil is taking his stand in any place our children are gathering. Listen, do you? it's no mistake that the devil is trying to reach our children at school. Why? Because this is a huge congregation of where our kids are. And friend, listen, I don't have to convince the teachers. I don't have to convince our parents of what we are seeing today. If Listen, in my days, and it wasn't too long ago where I graduated, it seemed like that long ago, we didn't have to worry about what we're seeing in, in the halls of our schools. Listen, we, we would kind of police our own schools, if you know what I'm talking about. Listen, we would just, if there was trouble, instead of getting all involved, we would just go outside the school and just kind of box and get it all figured out. Amen? That's just what happened. But it is so much different. The pressure that we're under, it's, it's the demands of our kids. And if your kids don't do that, then they're branded in school. We gotta run with the, we gotta run with the, with the together kids. We gotta run with the cool kids. And if you don't run with them, if you don't purchase those things, if you don't look like them, then you're branded and you're outcast. Friend, I want to tell you this. If you don't hear anything else, listen to me, parents. Your devil is after our children and he's going at them quick. Friend, if you can do anything, anything, expose them more to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give them a solid foundation. Something when, when, when the world breaks and something when, when the pressure comes, they'll have something to grab a hold of. Something that they know is solid. Something they know that is permanent. Amen. The Bible says, and heard of him and came and fell at his feet. One thing she heard about this Jewish carpenter could heal all diseases and she was willing to take a chance on him. You can see her urgency in her request by falling at the Lord's feet. The question for you and I today is this. What do you and I need to bring to the Lord today? There is hope for any child when there is a praying mother. Can anybody amen that? Amen that? May I submit to you this morning, some of you may be here only because, only because somebody prayed for you. And I can tell you this, with, with the way that things are going and the way that things are done today, it's probably because of some mother that have prayed for your soul and entreated God time after time after time when you thought your way was better, when you thought you had it all under control, when you wanted nothing to do with you, with, with God. Isn't it amazing? And one, it isn't going to be wonderful when we get to heaven and find out that it was our mom's prayers that kind of held us together. It's going to be those things that, that we just didn't want anything to do with, but our moms beseech God day after day after day. God, take care of my son. Take care of my daughter. Don't let them fall into harm's way. Amen. In order to see her beloved daughter healed, this woman had to come overcome many obstacles. And just one of these would derail us today. But she pressed on because she believed Jesus was her only hope. Now notice some of the obstacles that she had to overcome just to get to Jesus. And they'll be on the screen this morning. Number one, it was her race. Number one, it was her race. She was descended from a cursed people. Her people were vile and her people were very wicked. Her race was absolutely, would prevent her from coming to Jesus. Number two, it was her religion. She was a Gentile mother. Listen to this. She was a Gentile mother calling out to a Jewish Messiah. She had no legal right to Judaism, yet she was from a, from a Gentile clan and now she was coming and trying to get Jesus favored. Number one, it was a race. Number two, it was her religion. And number three, believe it or not, it was her racism. There was people that were there in that area that wanted nothing to do with her. And may I suggest to you this, everybody listen to this. Not only there were people in that area that didn't want anything to do with her because she was not a Jew, it was mainly the Lord's own disciples. Is it possible for God's people not to be who we really claim to be? Is it possible for God's people to exhibit a form of racism? When we don't care about who goes to hell and who does not. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Is anybody hearing this this morning? Is it, is it possible that we could develop a culture in our minds 
that hell is not as bad as what, what, what we think it is. And maybe heaven is just one of these grand schemes and these grand ideas. And we'll worry about that when we get there. But I, but I want to tell you, she, she had racism right from the start, right from the Lord's disciples. And notice this, not only was it her race, her religion, her racism, but her rejection. Jesus at first tells her that he comes to the lost house of Israel. Now think about this. Here was a lady that had all of these needs and all of these pressures, and she was seeing her daughter go through this agony of this devil inside of her, and she comes to Jesus, and then Jesus tells her this statement that seems so odd and so out of place in scriptures. He says something like this, but wait a minute, I come to the lost house of Israel first. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me, preacher, that, that Jesus did not care about this lady? We're going to get into that here in a minute. But Jesus says, I come to Israel first. Can you imagine this? Here was a lady that's desperate for help. And Jesus is saying, it's not you, it's the Jews first. What is up with that? Why would Jesus make a statement with, with this hurting lady like this? But there is something more to that story. Not only was her race, her religion, her racism, her rejection, and her reality. Her daughter was possessed by a devil, and she was a member of a doomed race. Her religion did not care for her, and it appeared that her situation was hopeless because when she came to Jesus, nothing happened. As a matter of fact, when you go over to Matthew's account of this story, or, or, is somebody here? When you get to Matthew's account of this story, you know what it says? Jesus said not a word. What? Here was somebody that's hurting, Jesus. Here was somebody that needed your help. And you're telling this woman that it was the Jews first. And in Matthew's account of this story, you're saying that you just sat there and watched and said nothing? What? There's got to be more to this. Why would Jesus be so hard? Why would it be so callous? Why would he be so cold? Let me just submit to you this morning. There's more to that story than meets the eye. The question I have for each of us this morning is this. What barriers are keeping you from Christ? You feel like you have no right to come to the Lord. Maybe even religious folks have rejected you in the past. You've done all you know to do and it does not appear to be working. You need answers, but where? Are you allowing some obstacles to stop you from coming to the Lord? Perhaps you've been away and perhaps you're trying to make a life change and maybe you're trying to make a turnaround and you're trying to experience all what church and all what religion has for you. And you're quite frankly, you're at the point and you say, Preacher, is there really any answers to this? Is there any answers to my life? What makes the difference if I go to over there or over there? Is Jesus all who claims to be? On a cold February night in 2001, Erica, age one, somehow wandered out of her house and spent the entire night outside. When her mother found the little girl, Erica appeared to be totally frozen. Her legs were stiff and her body frozen, and all life appeared to be gone. Erica was treated at a children's health care center in Edmonton. To the amazement of the doctors, the toddler showed no signs of brain damage. They gave Erica a clear bill of health. And she would soon go back to her way of life. Now listen to this. Some of us have wandered away from our father's house and brought us to the point of death. Our hearts have hardened and our spiritual bodies look as lifeless as that little girl in the snow. But our father knows we are missing and he's searching for us. He can take our lifeless spirits and and restore us back to hell. And restoring this woman's daughter was exactly what Jesus intended to do. Listen to me. Listen to me this morning. Somehow, each of us here today wants someone to tell us that everything's going to be all right. Each of us walked in this room and some of us are facing some pretty hard situations. And you want somebody to tell you there's hope. In finding out about hope, this woman would find out a little bit more about herself. When it appears that God was out of touch and insensitive to the needs of this woman, there's something that occurs that changes the dynamics of this story. And I learned something this week. And this is what I wanted to share with you. Are you awake with me this morning? When you read this story, and as I've read it many, many times, it does seem harsh from the outset. Certainly Jesus knew the condition of this woman's daughter. But notice Mark chapter 7 and verse number 27. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not me to take the children's bread. Now watch this and cast it to the dogs. Now, the Jews would often call Gentiles a dog, and what we would refer to a dog, they would refer to a mangy, mad-looking animal. 
And Jesus is not insulting this woman, but he had a deeper meaning in mind. Now notice what Jesus did here. This is so interesting. Jesus changed the meaning of the word dogs. When Jesus used that word, now watch this, he changed that word to the word puppies. Perhaps when our Lord said this, he said it with a wink in his eye and a smile on his face because there was a deeper meaning. Listen to this. And all of a sudden, this woman starts catching the Lord's meaning. The image here is of a puppy sitting under the table while the family eats a meal. It sits there hoping that someone will give it some food. Now, a puppy was different than the mangy dogs that roamed the area. A puppy, watch, was considered part of the family. Wait a minute. A puppy was considered part of the family. And now this woman, the light is starting to go on just a little bit. A puppy was considered part of the family. She's a Gentile. Jesus is a Jew. You know what he was saying? He's saying, you can be part of our family. Wait a minute. You know how significant that is? We're talking about somebody that was outside of the covenant promises. We're talking about somebody that had literally no hope until Jesus came on the scene. We're talking about somebody where Jesus left the area of the Jews, went to, went to a Gentile area, changed the meaning of the word dog, and said, listen, lady, listen, I'm offering you a part of our family, our extended family. It had to blow her mind. It had to just said she had to think, is this really possible for me? I'm not even part of the Jewish race. And all of a sudden, I am hearing that it might be possible for me to be part of the family. Wow. She says, it's not right to take food from the children's table and give it to the dogs. But even the dogs are sometimes given a bite from the table. She says, all I am asking for is a crumb. In other words, all this woman was asking was from a puppy's portion. She was willing to do whatever it took to see her daughter healed. And even if it meant being a puppy on the floor. When we get serious enough in our prayers to say to the Lord, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll take any position you want me to take. But Lord, this woman would say, watch this, my child needs your help and I am willing to do whatever it takes for you to heal her. Let me ask you something. When is the last time you approached the Lord like that? When is the last time you approached the Lord and said something like this? Lord, I'll do whatever it takes for you to bless my home. Lord, I'll do whatever it takes for you to bless my business, my finances, my health. Lord, I don't want to be in the way, but Lord, I want to be on your way. Lord, I want to do whatever it takes for you to bless my life. And this is what this woman was saying. Lord, I want your blessings so much. And if I've got to be on the floor like a common pup, I'll do so. But Lord, just bless my daughter's life. She was so desperate, she was willing to do anything in the world for her daughter. Moms. There's no doubt that you that you that are here, you would do anything in the world for your personal children. You would do anything if it meant to do what this woman would do. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How desperate are we for the Lord's blessings? This woman had faith that would not let Jesus go. So she said, the crumbs from the table, Jesus, will be just fine. How many of you would be content like that? How many of us are content like that? We have everything in life that we could possibly want. We got every gadget, every design, everything in our home. Listen, the reason why things aren't special to us anymore, because we've got so much. And the reason why a message like this doesn't appeal to your heart, because some of you say, well, preacher, it really, it really doesn't have an impact to me. The reason I have, have an impact to us is because we've got too settled in our, in our, in our spirituality that we ask nothing from Christ. Wait a minute, if I look up here. We ask nothing from Christ. We pray these small prayers. We don't even be bold in the throne of grace. We don't expect nothing. We don't ask nothing. And when our life starts turning around and doesn't go like we think it ought to go, somehow it's always God's fault. And we never have a part to play in this. And this lady was saying, if I've got to pick up crumbs, if I've got to be on the floor, God, I just want your presence and I'll do everything in my power to get the healing for my daughter. She wanted both things. And she asked a bold request. Did you re reason why our lives are shrinking spiritually and our churches is not as crowded as they used to be? Is because we've quit being bold for God. We sit down time after time after time with little prayers, little faith, and no action. Somebody amen that. 
Do you, do you understand what we're talking about? This lady had such confidence in God, despite where she came from, the region and her place and her nationality and her ethnic and all of the things that she had going against her. She believed in Jesus could do the impossible. And we in Calvary Baptist Church sometimes fail to believe that God can even answer our prayers. Friend, listen to me. We are on the brink, listen, we are on the brink of busting this church wide open if we would just only have confidence and believe believe in the fact that Jesus is who He said He was, and Jesus can bless us as He said He would, and Jesus does want His church to grow. But friend, listen to me. We're never challenged spiritually. We never challenge God with prayers. And we're just content with the table. And we want to sit at the table, but we're not content like this woman. Just give me a scrap. Just give me a scrap. Lord, whatever you do, I want that much faith that you just give me the scraps that a dog would eat. Now listen to me. When Jesus was seeing this demonstration of faith by this Greek woman, it had to touch his heart, and no doubt it did touch his heart in a big way. A lot of people at this point would have given up. Maybe some would have gotten angry. How dare Jesus call me a pup or a dog or whatever he called. He has no right to call me this. Do you remember a story over in the Old Testament? Where the captain of a guy by the name of Naaman had leprosy. Do you remember this story? And he went to the prophet and he says, I've got leprosy and I want you to come out in my words. I want you to do your hocus pocus and I want you to go and I want you to heal me. You know what the prophet says? Just go dip in the Jordan. Just go dip in the river and you'll be healed. This guy was so terribly mad that the prophet of God did not come out because after all, did he not know who he was talking to? The prophet of God should have come out and talked to him and told him, look, all you got to do is do this or touch him and he'd be healed. He was so mad until a little servant says, now wait, wait a minute. Or one of his guys said, wait a minute. If he'd asked you to do something big, would you, wouldn't you have done it? Yes, I'd have done it. All he's asking you to do is dip seven times and you're going to be clean. Just go try it from us. From me to you. Are we really ever challenged anymore by our spirituality? Or is it just something that you keep in your hip pocket on a Sunday? How much does your problem mean to you? Have you been so weighed down that you wanted to throw up your hands and quit? Have you decided that since you have been hurt by somebody at the church or that God doesn't care about your struggles or maybe you're at your breaking point and you just don't feel like that Jesus really cares? Here was a Gentile that had more faith than God's own people. In verse 27, Jesus says, Let the children first be filled. The word first is interesting because to this woman, it implies a second. This woman has started to see some hope for her situation. She knew that Jesus was there and she was not going to leave him alone until he brought her what she sought. Everybody look up here. Let me show you something. Everybody look. I want you to see verse 29. If you don't see anything else before we close, please see this verse. Verse 29. The Bible says it this way. And he said unto her, watch this, for this saying, go thy way, the devil has gone out of thy daughter. Oh, what, so what big deal about that? Well, now, wait a minute. Because this one woman would, would be satisfied with the crumbs, God gave her so much more. Notice the phrase that Jesus says, for this saying. The Lord says, because you had so much faith that you didn't give up, you didn't seek your own glory, you came to the right place, you came to the right person, I'm going to bless your life. Jesus told this woman, you can go home and enjoy your blessing. Now, everybody look up here and I'm close. Everybody look up here. Everybody look up here and I'm, I'm nearly done. All right, watch. Woo, watch. Something that I learned this week about this story was this. There was so much faith that this lady exhibited, and I wanted to show you, maybe I've missed it in all these times I've read this story, but Jesus told her something that's very significant for you and for me, and it was this. He says, go home and go enjoy your blessings. But now wait a minute. If it would have been us, here's what we would have said. Now wait a minute, Jesus, before I go home, can you give me proof that this miracle actually happened. Wait a minute, before you send me home, Jesus, i got to see, i got to know something. I've got to fill it in my hands. I, I think that you can do this, but I need proof that you are going to do this before I leave. I don't want to leave you, Jesus, and go home and find my daughter in the same shape. So you got to do something and let me know. No. You know what she did? She went home and just simply believed what God said. She just simply believed. Now, we're too cynical in this generation. We would have never done that. No, 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 no. I tell you what, Lord, why don't you go with me just in case, just in case your word can't travel that far to my house. 
just in case that something gets lost in the transition or maybe the email's down or maybe the Twitter's down and maybe we just don't get this. So just just come with me, Lord, and let me drag you there. No, 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 no. She just said, I'll go. And the Bible says, and it's interesting this, the Bible says she when she walked in her house, she found the daughter on the bed. And you say, well, what does that mean? Here's what that means. That symbolized that her daughter was at rest. Why was she at rest? Because the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some of you came into this church this morning. You hadn't been at rest since last Sunday. Some of you have been so troubled in your spirit. There's words that's been said. There's actions that's been done. There's things that you've uttered out of your mouth. And you have not been content in a long, 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 long time. You, 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 listen, you are in a place of bondage in your personal life and you, in, in your family. You're torn up inside all the time and you just simply can't take God's word that he can straighten out your situation. You see, you've came in here much like this woman did. Yes, you've got this heavy need. Yes, you've got this heavy burden. Maybe it is a wayward child. Maybe one of your children are not doing exactly what you think they are to do. Maybe it is something else, but you're torn up and you're saying, preacher, how can I develop that much faith in Jesus Christ? The only way you and I can do that is have a relationship with him. Wait, 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 wait. The only way we can do that is have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, the reason why some of your prayers are not answered is maybe because you don't know Him. My Bible says in Isaiah chapter 59, but your iniquities are separated between you and me. You know what Jesus is saying? You can pray till heaven comes down, but if you don't know Jesus as Savior, you're just wasting your time. Friend, listen to me. He's going to hear a righteous man, but friend, listen, He's wanting to hear your prayers this morning based on the fact that you've accepted Him as your personal Lord and Savior, based upon the fact that you know, that you know, that you know that you're on your way to heaven. Moms, let me give you a challenge this morning. It's this. How many times this last week have you been burdened down over one of your children or something something in your home that it's just weighed you down so much that it's affected your attitude, it's affected your mood? Maybe, dads, you've come home into a situation and you see what your wife is going through with the kids and you know that it's playing a big part and the home is not what it ought to be. There's just so much turmoil all the time. It's never at peace. Maybe, maybe, maybe this morning you just need to come and say, God, we need to dedicate our home and we need to dedicate our children to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Lord, let us be the parents that you've called us to be. Let us be challenged by, by the Word of God. And maybe moms and dads, you've been here this morning and you understand this, that you, listen, 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 that you need to take your children and expose them more to the Lord Jesus Christ and what you are. Maybe you've gotten lazy spiritually and maybe there's some answers this morning that God is trying to pour on your heart and He starts with this. Why don't you just come as this lady did and lay them at His feet? Wow, lay them at his feet. Think about when this woman returned home and she laid the eyes on that daughter and she was calm and in her right mind. Can you imagine when this lady had left this daughter what she had to face? Can you imagine all of the things? Can I tell you this? When this young daughter had a demon inside of her, there was no peace at the home. There was no, listen, there was no contentment. Everything was bent out of shape. The home was always in turmoil. And notice when this woman went, <clears throat> when this woman went home and she saw that daughter for the first time after Jesus healed her. What do you think that reunion was? What do you think that she thought when Jesus did that wonderful work? I can tell you what she thought. She, she thought that Jesus was just exactly who he said he was. And I want to just submit to you this morning. I'd imagine based upon this incident in the scriptures, there was a whole lot more Gentiles that were one to the Lord because of this one woman's testimony. Ladies, may I challenge you with this? Each and every one of you have a testimony that you need to share before the Lord Jesus Christ. Each of you have been equipped specially for something that only the Lord can do in your heart. Let me ask you, on this special day, what obstacles are you allowing to stand in your way of receiving what you need from the Lord? This woman had a lot going against her, but she had one thing in her favor, and it was her faith. She was satisfied with crumbs, but God gave her so much more. Let me ask you this. What on earth, what on earth are we letting satisfy us more than our relationship with Jesus Christ? Father, we thank you for the time we've spent this morning. Lord, we know there are those that do have heavy hearts. There are those that are hurting inside. There are those that are facing uncertainties. And Father, there are those that are just wanting to know if there are really hope for their situation. Father, it's, it's been a hard week for some. Testimonies would admit that. Hearts have not been in tune like they ought to be in. Maybe we've been involved in some things we never should have been involved in. But today could be your day. 
Today, today could be a day that you could start afresh and anew. My Jesus says that today is the day of salvation. Moms, if your heart is troubled, if there's some things going on in your home that you just need some relief about, wouldn't it be great if you just come and just say, God, I need you back in my home. You single moms today, you've got such a tough, tough burden on your hearts. Many burdens that you have and many things that you are undergoing, people just would never guess and never know. You're saying, preacher, it's so hard and the struggles are every day. Does Jesus really care? What are you satisfied with? This lady who has so much faith in God, she said, God, I'd be satisfied with a crumb if that's all I can get. What about you? What about your faith? What about your home? In the quietness of this moment, between you and God, God, I'm asking you to do something mightily in my home, in my heart, or in the situation that I'm involved in. Father, I need you so very, very, very much. And Lord, I just am seeking an answer for, your, for my prayers. If it's a crumb, I'll take a crumb. But God, I need you in my home. I need you in my life. I need you in this situation that I'm facing. Lord, would you speak to me this morning? If that's you, lift up your hand. I don't want to come to you. I just want to pray for you. Amen. Any others? Any others? Any others? Any others? Many, many, many this morning. Yes. The situations, Lord, all in this room. No one knows but you. But Father, for every hand that was raised, I would pray that a blessing would come their way. Father, maybe it'd be a scrap. Or maybe it'd be a full-blown miracle. Father, whatever they need, I'd pray that they'd seek it in you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Would you stand quietly and reverently?